everyone, Shane Stevenson, 29 and 29. And for today's video, we are in USS The Sullivans. And I tell you, it's pretty cold in here, right, Stephen? A little nippy. Little, little nippy. Uh, it's got to be about 40 degrees in here, I would say, something like that. Uh, but we are here to bring you a video of the aft steering compartment. There is a very famous story attached to the USS Johnston where Commander Evans, of course, the bridge is blown apart. Uh, Captain Evans runs to the fantail of the ship and starts barking orders down to the aft steering so the ship could remain under control and to go where Commander Evans wanted it to go. Uh, one can imagine, uh, we at least I don't know, if the all power was lost or if they still had power to the hydraulic pumps and the machinery and gearing back here. Uh, this space could have been used during, uh, with power, uh, with a helmsman, uh, or it could have been done manually with up to five people in this space. Uh, one helmsman, two guys actually rotating uh, the cylinders and the rams uh, to try and get uh, the ship into the position that the commander wanted. So I don't know if the Johnston had power or not. Uh, in some, art pa uh, some parts of the ship, I'm sure it did because it was still moving. Uh, so maybe it would have been a helmsman or two down here receiving orders from Commander Evans right above us and uh, steering the ship. Now, in a lot of movies, things like that, you sometimes you'll hear, uh, you know, hard right rudder, hard left rudder. Typically, that means up to about you're jamming the wheel at about 35 degrees starboard or port. So if you hear in movies, it's always an event of interest of mine if you hear hard right rudder or hard left rudder, right? That means a 35 degree turn, which is really just the safest you can do. But you never really want to do that too often because sometimes the rudder might jam. For ships, for post-Korean ships like the Sullivans, it would be interesting to hear what the Cass and Young and the uh, kid have to say about this. But our rudder was the second rudder added during her Korean service. Uh, one of the things that was notorious about the Fletchers, we love them, uh, the workhorses, the small boys, no doubt, but uh, the rudder was just a little too small for uh, the length of the ship and the beam of the ship. So it would, it would, its turning radius was not the greatest. So when they brought back uh, the vessels and the des destroyers for the Korean service, they actually added a larger, vertically longer rudder to try and adjust that. For the Cass and Young and Kid, I'd like to hear uh, what they have. So let's head on inside and I'll explain a little how this worked with Commander Evans barking the orders down from uh, the fantail and the guys trying to steer the ship. All right, be careful, Stephen. All right, welcome. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have this energy, this compartment energized, so I'll be walking around with the trusty flashlight. First thing you see here, of course, the ship's wheel. All right, so we had two stations, the bridge and aft steering to uh, maneuver the vessel. Up top, you have a rudder in angle indicator. All right, you have a gyro compass right here. <coughs> and of course, you have all the power uh, for the steering gear in general, whether it was coming from the bridge or coming from aft steering. This was the power paneling for all of this space, all right? Again, whether it's coming from the bridge or coming here. So, as I mentioned, there you go, 35 degrees on each is the hard right or hard left. So you're turning the wheel, and what actually happens? All right, well, you see these two motors down here, right? Motor two, motor one, port and starboard. All right, now these, controlled the, uh, the hydraulic system and the rams. So if you follow me. So the painted uh, green and red, that is to differentiate between port and starboard, yeah, correct? Yeah. That it, would be. It, yes, it kind of matches the running light system on board a ship. 
you know, even down to uh, luxury or, or leisure craft like ships, right? Like just you buy a boat, a motorboat or a 20 foot sailboat or something. They're always red and green, uh, they're running lights to, to designate in the dark uh, if a ship's coming at you or towards you, you know, and then what side of the ship you're actually looking at. All right, so here you have the rudder post, right? This is where the rudder comes in from the outside. And you'll see the two rams, the hydraulic rams here, uh, port and starboard. All right, so as the ship's wheel rotates, what it does is through those two motors that I showed you, it pushes uh, the hydraulic fluid into one side, removing it from the other, creating pressure to then be able to rotate the rudder post to where you want it. Now what happens, once you get it to an angle, you know, of course you don't want the rudder going left and right constantly. So you have rack and pinion gearing, all right, which will then release uh, the hydraulic fluid and then neutralize all of the pressure in the rammers and therefore uh, keep it at where you want it. All right, so if you're so it's it's not always moving based on the hydraulics going port and starboard, all right? It neutralizes and then therefore it doesn't move until again you turn the wheel. So it's a way of keeping a position uh, without you having to hold it in that position. Maybe like an airplane or something, right? If you're trying to, you know, it, it can cause a lot of uh, a lot of strain, so to speak. All right, so they had a cutoff neutralizing position. Uh, where the rudder would then just stay. Now, as I mentioned uh, with Commander Evans, we don't know if there's power back here or not, uh, but there would have been the helmsman, certainly uh, a radio man back here, maybe receiving orders through a phone system. Uh, but if, if there is no power and you still need to steer, what I can imagine is you'd have the helmsman and then you'd have two guys on each side and what I can do is I can imagine that these are the wheels that then would manually turn, uh, push the hydraulic fluid into and out of the rammers in lieu of these two motor generators. So if these motor generators cut out, you actually have guys standing there turning a wheel to pressurize and unpressurize, uh, for lack of a better phrase, the hydraulic fluid going to uh, the port and, port and starboard rammer. So they're moving it manually, you're moving the wheel, all right, and then you're following the orders here uh, for a different angle and if it's port or starboard. All right, and you can also imagine that you're doing this backwards, all right, because you are facing, we are facing, there's the back of the ship, uh, the nameplate USS the Sullivans is probably right on the other side of that, uh, the aft, the transom bulkhead right there. And so you are facing aft while you're steering. So I can imagine that you're doing it in reverse of what you would be doing on the bridge, because on the bridge you're facing forward. All right, so you can imagine, just like with the USS Johnston, uh, the bridge gets blown apart this is a secondary, secondary steering compartment and the captain can give you orders from here. You have all of the electronics, all right, to keep it, uh, to keep this area energized. And uh, that's a way to get your ship out of uh, harm's way. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks for all your support and please check in tomorrow because there'll be another video tomorrow. Have a great day.